Hi, I'm John McWilliams from trainadog.com, the official website of Poison Experience Pet Services here in Rockaway, New Jersey, with another helpful hint for us pet dog owners. During the course of your dog's life, you're going to want to clean their ears, especially if they have floppy ears, especially if they go swimming during the summer times. You always want to go over and just make sure the dog's ears are clean, because once they get infected, it causes a lot of other problems, and it does oftentimes cause behavioral problems because it often hurts the dog when their ears are infected and they'll think that the person touching them is the person that hurt them rather than the infection. A lot of ways of doing it, and one of the ways that I've learned several years ago, I find very effective. But prior to doing anything medical or anything medically related with your dog, you do want to talk to your vet first and see what he or she recommends. Many of us, prior to going and trying to do something with this dog, start creating an environment of nerves and angst. We start getting all weirded out, we get the dog, and then we start the process of trying to get the gauze pad or the, or the uh, cotton available. Prior to even touching this dog, you want to go over and, and start taking care of business. Go over and get gauze pads. I like gauze pads. Some people like cotton, cotton balls. Get the gauze pad and don't even worry about what your dog is doing at that moment. And wrap the gauze pad around your finger and almost make a Q-tip with your finger. If you use your finger, it's going to be too thick to do damage to the dog's eardrum. A Q-tip, even though it's going to be very difficult to actually make contact with the eardrum because of the placement of it, it still can bend and maybe sometimes get to it. Your finger can't bend enough in, within the dog's ear canal to actually cause damage. Now you're ready. You have, you have the gauze pad. If you want to do it dry, you do it dry. A lot of times, though, you're going to want to have a solution on it. Once again, you want to ask your vet what he or she recommends as, as, as a a liquid solution to clean your dog's ears. It's my understanding that you don't want to use things like rubbing alcohol or peroxide as a rule because it'll tend to do other things to the dog's ears. Now you're ready to do it. Put the dog in between your legs in a wedge. Go over and kneel down. In be pardon me. You go down and kneel down with your dog and create a wedge with your legs. Okay, put the dog within that wedge. Now the dog's facing out. Now take that finger and just like it's no big deal, just stick it in the dog's ears. You don't want to beg, beg the dog. You don't want to go over and telegraph to the dog what you're doing. Hey, I'm just cleaning your ear, honey. Okay? And get in there and get in all the nooks and crannies. With your finger, you can actually feel it. And as you're doing it, hello, my baby. It's no big deal. You don't want to actually tell this dog what you're doing because because then it just adds to the moment. To get it out. I like sniffing it. If it smells nasty, it's a nasty ear. Get that dog to the vet. If it just smells like a dog's ear, you're doing well. You keep on cleaning it until all of a sudden there are no, there are no little black spots or grease marks on the gauze pad. It might take you several moments. Don't try to do the entire moment at the same time. Sometimes you're going to give your dog a break. Like right now, Alita's getting a little tired of it. So I'm going to give her a break. Why not? Why not? I'll come back in a couple of minutes. I'll go play with her a couple of seconds and then I'll go over and now reset her and put her back in it and go back to work. Hello, my baby. Okay, try not to make a big deal about it. The less of a deal it is with you, the less of a deal it, it'll be with your dog. Just another helpful hint from us here at trainadog.com, positive experience pet services.